Hello, in this video we're going to look at adding, multiplying, and dividing convergent sequences of real numbers. Now, in a video that I want to do, I need uh, some theorems on sequences, and so I need a, uh, pu I want to publish these and then be able to point back to them in those later videos. And this is one of the early ones that I'll need for another one, another uh, uh, video on uh, series, uh, you know, of sequences. So anyway, so th uh, here's the theorem. We're going to let AN be a sequence that converges to AN and BN be a sequence that converges to, to B. Now, notice these, are, we're not adding them up, right? These are just sequences of numbers. Uh, in, a, in later videos, we're going to um, add these uh, sequences up, but now it's just a sequence. So as as the as n goes, you know, from integer to integer, then these change. But as they go to infinity, as n goes to infinity, this converges to a number a, and this is converges to a number b. Okay, and so where a n and b n are sequences of real numbers, um, I should say that a and b are real numbers. Then these following theorems hold. If we take it times a, another real number, this sequence, then it converges to C times A. We can add them, add sequent, convergent sequences, and they uh, converge to A plus B. We can multiply convergent sequences, and we can divide by convergent sequences. Here, of course, B N and B can never be zero. So let's just let's just start in. So for one. Um, we must show that for a given epsilon, there exists an n such that n greater than this n, we have that the difference between our sequence and our limit is less than epsilon. And epsilon can be any positive number, so it can be really, really small, which says that these get really close. And since epsilon's arbitrary, then then that does equal. You know, this is equal. So now, so since a n is a convergent sequence to A. We have that A n is less than epsilon over, you know, uh, absolute value of C. And this is for a given uh, epsilon over C and n greater than some n that makes it true. I mean, we know it because it's a convergent sequence. Thus, this quantity is equal to this if we factor out the C and then it's less than, we keep the C here, and then this, since it's a convergent sequence, we made it less than this, but this is equal to epsilon, and this is for a given epsilon and in, in, in n greater than n1. This is true. So we just proved it. So part one is uh, is finished. So now part two, let's, uh, for a given epsilon over two, there exists an n1 such that all n greater than n1, we have that the uh, sequence a n can, you know, this difference is less than epsilon over two. And we know that because a n is a convergent sequence. And similarly, we can do it for, for b. So given epsilon over two, there exists an n such that n greater than n two, we have this is true. And, and that's true because b n is a convergent sequence to b. So now for a given epsilon, there exists an n, and we're going to let that n be the maximum of n1 and n2. We have the following. So here is what we want to show that that this sum is is uh, is is really close. It's less than epsilon. So now we can rearrange these because we're dealing with real numbers into this, and then the triangle inequality says that this uh, addition of absolute values is greater than this. But as n goes to infinity, then this convert this is uh, less than um, epsilon over two, and this one is less than epsilon over two. So really, this should be a less than sign, less than or equal to epsilon over two, and this one is less than or equal to epsilon over two. But this is equal to epsilon, so this is less than epsilon, and that's for a given epsilon and all n greater than uh, and in greater than so we I probably should also put in here um, you know such 
oops, such that n greater than n, then this result holds. So number three is the um, product. So here this was the sum of sequences. This uh, part three is the product of sequences. So given this number, there exists an n1 such that all n greater than n1, um, this difference is less than this number. And that's because a n is a convergent sequence. Now, I, in all my videos, I always say at some point you have to stop going back and back and back and proving things and just assume some things are through, uh, true. And as I was doing this video, this is probably one of the videos that, uh, or one of the properties that I'll probably put another video out proving it. But for this one, we're going to assume it's true. And so since a n is a convergent sequence, it is bounded by some number m. And that means the absolute value of a n is greater or is less than, strictly less than m. And this is for all n. Okay. So now given epsilon over 2m, and this m is really this m, there exists an n2 such that n greater than n2, we have that this, it, this quantity is true, this inequality. And that's because bn is a convergent sequence. And this difference can get really, really small, no matter what this number is. So now for a given epsilon and n greater than n, which is the maximum of these two, now notice, I wish I would have done that up here, but I had to write it in. I don't know what I was thinking. So n is greater than cap n, which is the maximum of n, n1 and n2. We have the following. So this is what we need to show is really small or less than epsilon for that given epsilon. So now let's add zero here. And then by the triangle inequality, we can look at this nugget and that nugget and this is greater than this number. Now, we can factor out an a n on this one and a b over here. Then, then we know that this quantity is less than m because it's bounded, and this is less than epsilon over two m according you know to up what we set up there, and b is you know, whatever it is, and a n is less than um, this quantity here. So let's plug that in, and we get this. So this is less than m, that's less than this epsilon over 2m, the b comes down, and this we said was less than that. So now when we, uh, of course the m cancels here, then we're going to get like denominators, and we get this here. Now, on the top, we factor out an epsilon, and we're left with uh, 4b plus 1, 4b plus 2. Well, this quantity is less than 1. So if we get rid of it, then just have epsilon. This number is bigger than this one, because that's less than 1. And then we're finished. We showed that this difference is really small when n is really large. So now the last theorem is when we look at uh, division of sequences. So here we we need to well by the assumption b n is convergent and b and b n are not zero. Okay, and so this is another one of those uh, things that we're going to assume is true, and I'm I'm going to have another video illustrating that it is true that there exists an M such that this sequence is bounded by M. This is for all N. Um, and, you know, it, the, it's, it's fact, it depends upon that it's convergent and then these are not zero. And this, we can show that it's bounded. Now, M is really, it could be extremely large, ex you know, depending upon, you know, BN and how it behaves. And so, this piece of the theorem is actually very important because without it, then we don't know if this blows up to infinity. But by this theorem, we can show that there is some number that bounds it. You know, it may be extremely large, but there's a number that exists. Okay, so then given uh, epsilon over 2m, there exists an n1 such that all n greater than n1. We have this is true, and that's because a n is a convergent. 
In the same way here, given this number, which you know really means you know epsilon and m and a and b, there exists an n2 such that all n greater than n2, this is true. No matter how small this gets, this is true because bn is a bounded number. I mean a convergent sequence. So given epsilon and n greater than n, which is the maximum of n1 and n2, we look at this uh, difference here. And we want this really small. Uh, less than epsilon because then that says that those you know in limit they equal so let's combine this into a fraction and this bottom part we can factor out to this and the top part we're going to add zero plus and minus the same quantity then we can use the uh, triangle inequality on this piece and this piece and we get this, and then this division I just write under it to save space. Um, here, the B's cancel, and we're left with this. Um, of course, then I break it apart because this is something that we want to, you know, that we know about. That can be a really small number. And then over here, we just have A over BN, and then that number there. Well, we know that, that 1 over the absolute value of bn is bounded by m. So, so it's le this is less than this I because mean, we're going to put a bigger number there. And then the same way here, we can take out this 1 over bn. And then it's bounded by m. You know, and then um, we know that an minus a, we said it's definitely less than this number. And bn minus b is definitely less than this number according to our assumptions up there then you know the m's cancel here and we're left with epsilon over 2 and um, here this simplifies to this you know we take out the epsilon here and then this is what's left over of course the m goes up the b's cancel and, it, and we're left with this but look at this we have uh, we have this number divided by twice that number plus one. So this number is actually less than a half. So it's bounded by epsilon over two plus one half epsilon. Well, this is epsilon. So now we've shown that this difference is really small for a given n and all n greater than, you know, the, the maximum of n1 and n2. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.